Welcome back to the Ripe Wave Audio community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, I am optimizing the audio settings for music with the Sony UBP-X1100ES Ultra High Definition Universal Blu-ray Player. If you have been following this series, you will know that I recently purchased the Sony X1100ES UHD Player and had a favorable first impression of the unit. Now it is time to dig into the settings to ensure that I'm getting the best sound possible when playing music. If you miss the earlier content, check out the RipeWave audio videos entitled Shopping for a UHD Player Parts 1 and 2 and Sony UBP-X1100ES First Impressions. I have provided links and a playlist to those for your convenience. In the previous videos, I simply duplicated the connectivity I used with the player the X1100ES replaced, HDMI to the TV, and coax to my AV processor, which is a vintage Sony TAE 9000ES, and that configuration functionally worked. However, I am not certain I am getting the best audio playback with that setup. What I have learned is that these systems are designed to help the consumer succeed. However, success for many consumers is simply being able to see the video and hear the sound. The average user may be playing content for years without knowing they have untapped capabilities for a better experience. First, discs can have multiple audio layers or tracks. To help with compatibility, a two-channel PCM track is required on Blu-ray discs. Furthermore, SACDs can be hybrid with a CD layer. And Blu-ray Pure Audio discs can have language options, for which both two-channel and surround content are available. When it comes to surround sound, players can output in 5.1 as a fallback as Dolby Digital and DTS are also required on Blu-ray discs. What isn't addressed on the source disc content can often be handled by the player to ensure the, that regardless of your system's capability, you have a means to hear the audio. The challenge is to know which cabling type and settings will result in the best playback experience given your system capabilities. With the Sony X1100ES, you have five cabling options to deliver audio to your AV processor. HDMI, HDMI audio only, coax, optical, and analog outputs. Setting all knowledge of which options might be the best aside, I simply connected as many types as my system could support so I could compare experiences. HDMI and HDMI audio only were connected to my UHD TV as my AV processor does not support. It will be the job of the TV to pass those signals to the AV processor via an optical connection. I am in luck as my Sony Samsung TV has the capabilities of outputting multi-channel content via its optical output. The other three I connected directly to the Sony AV processor. As that processor has plenty of inputs, I can use a separate input for each signal type. Input 1, TV optical. Input 2, player optical. Input 3, player coax. Input 4, pl player analog. This will enable me to audibly compare. For the test, I started with two-channel content. For this, I used Diana Krall's The Girl in the Other Room on compact disc. To start, I will leave the player with the default settings. Digital output set to auto. Down mix set to stereo. PCM set to 48 kilohertz. Audio DCR, or dynamic range compression, set to auto. DSD output mode BD Secondary Audio, DTS Neo 6, and DCHX all set to off. With the HDMI feeding to the TV, I am able to see the on-screen display. 
the player identifies the disc as a stereo 44.1 kHz 16-bit source, as expected. Both TV and processor identify the digital signals as PCM. Changing the TV source to HDMI audio only signal, I get the same audio results, but with a generic video screen that informs me that HDMI 1 is for video and HDMI 2 is for audio only. Therefore, I will focus on the standard HDMI signal from HDMI 1. Performing an ABCD comparison, non-blind, ear-only test, I rank the sound quality in the following order from best to worst. The best sounding input was the player directly connected to coax, followed by player optical, then player analog, and finally TV optical. There was only a subtle difference between the player coax and optical signals. A blind test should be conducted to be fair, as my processor converts all analog signals to digital and back to analog again, I feel I am not hearing the true output from the player and therefore I am not getting a good representation of the player's internal DAC. I would need an analog preamp to better judge its internal DAC. For my next test, I switch to a multi-channel Blu-ray pure audio disc. Instead of something like Pink Floyd's latest release, I decided to pop in my Chicago 7 disc from the four channel Quadio Quadraphonic box set as the rear channel separation is so pronounced. The on-screen display identified the source as a DTS HD Master Audio 4.0 channel 192 kilohertz signal. With the Blu-ray source, the on-screen display also reports what the HDMI output signal is. What I found odd was that the HDMI output was reported as a DTS 2 channel 192 kilohertz signal. Something we'll look into further later. I scanned through the inputs and monitored the signal status on the processor. I found that I was getting all four channels with DTS encoding with the direct player coax and optical inputs, but only had two channels with no surround encoding with the optical TV input. The processor was reporting the digital signals at 48 kilohertz, which is the maximum sampling rate of the processor. As the analog output of the player is only capable of two channels, I am only concerned with knowing if the down mixer is working as desired. Here's where the highly separated Quadio recording helps. Six seconds into the first cut, prelude to air, shakers can be heard only in the rear speakers. Switching to the two-channel audio analog input, I can still hear those, so I know the down mixer is doing its job. I then turned my attention to see if I could resolve the issue I was having with the TV optical input. First, I changed the player's down mixer setting from stereo to surround, but I was still getting two channels and the HDMI output still reported as two channel. Going into the Samsung TV's additional sound settings, I see while the HDMI audio format was set to bitstream, the audio format setting was set to PCM. Changing the TV's audio format to DTS did the trick. The processor instantly reported DTS 4 channel source for that input with that change. It appears the OSD for the player doesn't tell the whole story for the HDMI output, which I find annoying as I can clearly uh, hear four channels uh, coming through the HDMI source. With that problem resolved, I once again performed a comparison of the input sources on the processor. I rated the sound quality with the same order as I assigned with the Crawl CD, except I now found the TV optical output to be clearer than the analog output. Perhaps a moot point as the direct player coax input is still my preference. For a closer comparison, 
I selected disc playback as DTS HD Master Stereo versus DTS Master Quadrio 4.0. After that change, the processor received two channels on all inputs with digital inputs all still reporting that DTS decoding was being handled by the processor. With all inputs now at two channel, the audible differences became less detectable. At this point, it was time to play with the remaining audio settings. Knowing the limitations of my processor, as well as that of SPDIF outputs, there are some settings I won't be able to test out. SPDIF interfaces in general are limited in bandwidth and can carry only two channels of uncompressed audio or up to 7.1 channels of compressed audio. Coax is limited to 24-bit 192 kilohertz and optical is the most constrained with a maximum signal of 24-bit 96 kilohertz supported. HDMI provides the greatest level of support and allows for eight channels of uncompressed audio at 24-bit 192 kilohertz. The data suggests that upgrading to a processor with HDMI inputs will provide the best audio experience. As such, until I have a processor with HDMI inputs, I will need to keep the digital audio output set to auto and not PCM if I want to listen to multi-channel content. I am going to change the audio DRC dynamic range compression so it is always turned off. As the system is in a mostly isolated basement, there is no need to compress the audio for night viewing. I don't anticipate using Blu-ray disc secondary audio content, but if I do, I will need to enable this setting and realize that the added bandwidth of HDMI will be needed for best results. To understand the impact of the DSD HDMI output mode, I loaded an SACD from Elton John and set the mode to auto. The player's OSD reported the disc as a super audio CD with a DSD multi 2.8 MHz 1-bit signal. The SPDIF inputs to the processor reported as two-channel 16-bit at 44 kHz. This, I believe, is due to licensing constraints of the SACD format, whereby only HDMI is permitted to transmit higher quality signals. I once again had trouble with HDMI playback through the TV, and no change in settings appears to overcome this problem. While you can go into the music settings and change the Super Audio CD playback channels from DSD Multi to DSD 2 channel, this change does not impact the signal received by the processor. From the music settings, you can also force playback to use the CD layer on a hybrid disc, but I don't think I will have a need for that option. There is also an option to up-channel stereo sources using DTS Neo 6 with either music or cinema settings. Going back to the Diana Krall CD, I gave this a try, but this feature failed to work with my setup. I see that it is limited to the HDMI output, and it appears my devices are not able to process. As my processor is limited to 48 kHz sampling, changing the PCM sampling rate limit from 48 kHz default should not make a difference. Furthermore, as I am using the bitstream output, changing these settings naturally did not have an effect. Lastly, I experimented with the DC-HX processing of the X1100ES player. This Sony technology upscales signals with a proprietary algorithm that is designed to fill in missing details. Note that this setting cannot be used in conjunction with DTS Neo 6. Here, AB comparison is a little tough as Sony requires you to stop playback to enter the audio setting configuration. And the whole change takes so long you forget how the last setting sounded. Here is one setting I wish they provided instant access to, ideally with a button on the remote so you could turn it on and off at will without a gap in playback. 
With that said, I do feel that the DC HX turned on provides better definition and clarity on the top end. Another annoyance is the fact that Sony has dropped support for Grace Note, presumably as a cost-cutting measure. As a result, title name, track name, and artist name are not displayed unless provided on the disc itself. For example, with SACDs, I can see the track names, and with Blu-ray Pure Audio Discs, I get a nice graphical menu similar to movies. So it's not an issue with those formats. But for CDs, I am out of luck. After this round of optimization for the X1100ES, I have settled on the following configuration. Digital output set to auto, down mix set to surround, PCM set to 48 kilohertz, DCHX set to on, and the DSD output mode BD secondary audio, DTS Neo 6, audio DCR, all turn to off. Overall, I am still happy with this purchase. As I use this player some more, I feel that the load times for the disc aren't as good as with my initial impression. However, I do recall at least one reviewer which reported the Sony load times as the fastest, so I suppose I am not completely happy with the best. While the Panasonic UB820 is often preferred, I feel this unit is still right for me as the Panasonic does not support SACD at all. Curious about the DTS Neo 6 upscaling, SACD multi-channel output, and sampling beyond 48 kilohertz that I am missing out on, I am going to borrow a more modern processor to see if that improves things, so stay tuned. If you also own a Sony X1100ES or similar player, I would be interested in hearing your feedback. Please include them in the comments section. Are you coming to the same conclusions? Do you have some setup tips you'd like to share? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.